Hello there, I am Janet Graziani, Developer Advocate at Teradata. Today, I am very excited to demonstrate an end-to-end -end predictive AI demo that highlights why Teradata is the most complete cloud analytics and data platform for AI. Predictive AI is a subset of AI that involves using machine learning models to forecast future events based on historical data. And in this demo, we're going to explore this concept in action using Teradata Vantage. We'll predict energy consumption using two different machine learning models, and we'll compare their prediction results to identify the most accurate. We'll walk through the entire ML pipeline development process using Teradata Vantage in conjunction with open source tools and techniques. I will also cover BYOM, bring your own model functionality for any models that are trained externally on partner environments, including AWS SageMaker, Azure ML, and Google Vertex AI. With BYOM, we can load those externally trained models onto Vantage and deploy at scale. Let's get to it. To access today's demo, visit teradata.com forward slash experience. Here you can create an account and sign in. Once you sign in, you'll be taken to this interface that makes it very simple to spin up environments on Teradata Vantage. Within these environments, you can train models, deploy them, and maintain them using model ops. We will select run demos. This will open up a hosted Jupyter Notebook environment on a separate tab giving you access to over 80 AI ML demos across different industries. We will filter by energy and natural resource industry, and we will select our energy consumption forecasting demo. The drop-down menu gives us options. We'll select our Python version. Let's take a second to discuss the business scenario for this demonstration. For energy trading companies, it is extremely important to be able to accurately model energy consumption and to precisely predict energy demand. Accurate forecasts can help energy trading companies prevent losses from underestimating demand or overselling energy to the market. In addition, inaccurate forecasts can also disrupt cash flow and result in regulatory penalties or even trading disqualifications. The good news is that with Teradata Vantages, in-database Clearscape Analytics functions, and AI ML capabilities, energy trading companies can build their predictions with confidence. Let's see how it's done. Now that we're back in our Jupyter Notebook, let's scroll down and begin importing the libraries that we need. Here we are importing our Teradata ML library, which allows us to manage, operate, and perform analytics on Teradata Vantage's massively parallel architecture. We're also using linear regression and random forest regressor. These are two open source machine learning models that enable us to build our predictions. We then establish a connection to our database using the password that we set when we created our environment. And we proceed to ingest data onto that Teradata Vantage environment using a stored procedure called getData. This stored procedure is using a native object store operation in the backend to ingest that data from object store. Native object store is a SQL-like syntax that makes it very simple to explore or ingest data into Teradata Vantage. For this example, we're ingesting the data into our Teradata Vantage environment. We're now ready to begin our exploration of our data. When we use the Teradata ML client connection library, we can easily access data sets that reside in Teradata Vantage. Our Python methods are going to be translated into SQL and executed within Teradata Vantage's massively parallel architecture. This allows us to interact with any data sets of any size and scale. For example, here, we're creating a virtual data frame that points to our data in Teradata Vantage without bringing the data to our local client machine. Here we can see that we have 32,000 records and 17 data points. Let's explore a preview of our data frame. Here we have a representation of energy consumption in Norway from January 2016 to August to to August 2019, and each record in our data set represents hourly energy consumption. We also have additional data, including weather conditions, daylight information, and labor calendar events that all affect energy consumption. Creating visualizations can present challenges in processing and interpreting, and often result in slow performance. Fortunately, Teradata provides TDplot. TDplot is a method within Teradata ML that simplifies large-scale visualizations. With TDplot, users can create these large-scale visualizations within the Teradata environment, eliminating the need to transfer data, enhancing efficiency, and reducing costs. 
Here we're going to plot energy demand over time. On the x-axis, we plot the TD time code. On the y-axis, we plot consumption. And within seconds, we have a beautiful visualization of energy demand. We can also create separate visualizations for each feature, including air temperature, cloud area coverage, and precipitation to be able to visualize and understand how energy consumption correlates and varies depending on each feature. To do this efficiently, we're going to use the min-max scalar function and the transform function from Teradata ML. Once our scaling and transformation has occurred, we can then plot our new data set. We're going to loop through all three new columns and use our tdplot method to generate our three different visualizations. And within seconds, Teradata Vantage returns our three different visualizations. It's now very easy to spot patterns within these visualizations. For example, if we compare our first plot, our air temperature, against our energy demand plot, we notice an inverse relationship. When air temperature drops, there is an increase in energy demand, likely due to the increase in heating and vice versa. As previously mentioned, ClearScape Analytics provides a suite of powerful in database functions that streamline data exploration and data preparation. We've already seen a handful of the, these functions in our data exploration step. Now let's explore our functions for our data preparation for data modeling. We'll begin by scaling our data set. It's important to scale our data so that all features contribute equally to our model, preventing any one single feature from dominating due to a difference in scale. Here we begin by designating our transformation objects. We use our one hot encoder function for our weekdays and hours to generate separate binary columns for weekdays and hours respectively. And then we use our min max scalar function to, to scale our weather features on a scale of zero to one. And finally, we define our uh, another transformation object, which is going to designate certain columns to be retained in the final data set. Now, once we have defined our data transformation objects, we are ready to begin the transformation process with our transform function. This transform function is going to use the transformation objects created in the previous step to prepare our data for modeling. Specifically here, we're using our weekday and hour transformation object to convert weekdays and hours from numeric to one hot encoded columns. And here we use our RS transformation object to scale our weather related features. And finally, our RT object is going to be used to keep certain columns. We execute this transformation function and we can preview the final data set. You can notice here that we have additional columns for our days of the week, Monday through Sunday, and for every hour in the day, zero to 23, with all of our data scaled adequately. Our data is ready to be properly used with our models. We can now proceed to use our copy to SQL function to generate a testing and training data set. We're going to use the last 168 hours uh, or the last seven days for testing, and we use the re remaining of those uh, remaining of the data set for training are finally ready to move on to the model training step of our process. Here, you can see that we copy our training data set to our client side, and we're only doing this to simulate a scenario where our models are trained externally. We do this to showcase BYOM functionality, bring your own model, which enables us to train models externally and load them onto Vantage to deploy at scale. Here we proceed to find the last 24 hours of our training data set and we compute our average energy consumption. We then create two data frames. Our train X data frame is going to house our features used for training our machine learning model by dropping our TD time code and our consumption column. And finally, we have our train Y data frame, which houses our normalized values. As you can see here, we're using our normalized value to normalize our data set by subtracting this value from all consumption values, reducing the scale of our data 
and centering our values closer to zero to make the learning process of our machine learning model more stable. And finally here, we are generating a list of all of our features. We create two PMML pipelines, one with a linear regression object and the other with a random forest regressor object. We use these two created pipelines to train our machine learning models using this FIT method and our pre-processed data. We then store our trained models in PMML files locally. We are now ready to load our PMML files onto Teradata Vantage. For this, we invoke a save BYOM function to load both of our trained models onto our energy models table in Vantage. And we also use this list BYOM function to show our model table. It is that simple to load trained models, externally trained models onto Teradata Vantage. And here we have our binary representation of each PMML trained model on Teradata Vantage. We're at the final step of the process, which involves taking our trained model and testing it against the data that resides in Teradata Vantage. For this, we're going to employ our Teradata PMML predict function, which will allow us to take our stored pipeline object and execute it against the testing data in Vantage. As you can see here, we're using a retrieve BYOM function to create a pointer to our linear regression model in our energy models table. And then we invoke our PMML predict function to generate our predictions using the data that resides in Teradata Vantage. And then we choose to keep the TD time code and consumption columns from our testing data. This will allow us to have an easier time when we visualize our results. And a preview of our results, we can see here that our predictions are side to side to our actual consumption from our testing data. We repeat the same in database scoring process for our random forest model, and we retrieve our results. As you can see, the Teradata PMML predict function has allowed us to score our two machine learning models with the data that resides in Teradata Vantage without having to move the data or the model outside of our system. This increases our efficiency and our security in the scoring process. Now it's time to visualize and compare our results. We'll start by calculating the root mean square error values for both our linear regression and random forest models. The RMSE is the average between our predictions and our actual values, which gives us a better indication of our model's performance. The lower the RMSE value, the more accurate our model is. Now we proceed to plot our actual energy consumption and our predictions. It is clear that the random forest model depicted in green outperforms the linear regression model in predicting energy demand. Therefore, the random forest model is most suitable for proactively predicting energy demand in this case. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please visit support.teradata.com forward slash community and find the Clearscape Analytics featured forum. You must register and log in to be able to ask a question. Thank you so much. Until next time.